Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. It's all about showing up. The power is in the asking. Now, this book is an anthology of 45 individual heartfelt stories written by 46 authors. And the purpose of this book is to provide examples of how implementing these important mantras can be life-changing. Today, here at Sister Power, we have three of the 46 authors with us here today. We have the lovely Robbie Martyr. Aloha, Robbie. Aloha, Sharon. I'm so happy to, to be on your show. And I remember spending wonderful time with you the last time I was in Hawaii. Thank you. I do too. I remember that time too. We'll talk about that later. And we have Joan Wakeland. Aloha. Thank you for having me on your show. Aloha. And the lovely Angela. How are you? I'm fantastic. Aloha. Thank you so much, Sharon, for the opportunity. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Good, good. You know, this is very exciting. Uh, your book is all about showing up. Uh, and the powers in the acting. And I want to ask you, Robbie, it, it was your vision uh, to come up with this book. And we'll talk about that later because years ago we were talking about something similar to that in Waikiki and you taught me a valuable lesson. Uh, what inspired you to write this book? Well, I've been, it's been a mantra of mine for many years, making women understand the power of showing up and the power of asking. And I thought if we put this book together with people sharing their stories of how their life changed or how they uh, m met the right people or different things that happened that impacted their life because they showed up and asked. Right. So Joan, uh, tell us about your story in the book. Um, what, what, is, what was it all about? What did you learn when writing the book? Actually, I wrote about getting out of your comfort zone because that's where nothing happens. It's like a rocking chair. You're busy rocking, but you're not going anywhere. So what happened to me is that I moved into a new town and I didn't know anybody so I stopped at a restaurant and asked, do you know someone in this town that runs a meeting for women? I'd like to connect. And he said to me, come back and I'll introduce you to Robbie Motter. Then my life changed. <laughs> I've met so many influences because of Robbie. Yeah, Robbie's a connector. I think you and I, Joan had that conversation. They call me the connector here in Honolulu. It's so, so very vital to network wherever we are. And mm -hmm. so Angela, you are one of the authors in the book. What surprised you the most when you were writing your story? And tell us a little bit about your story. So Robbie asked me to uh, publish the book and she says to me, I think you should put a chapter in. And I said, you know, it's, it's an incredible honor to me just to be a part of this because I know how impactful it's going to be. And, you know, I, it just really touched on something very emotional for me. So I was, I was reluctant to write it, but, you know, just like Joan says, you get out of your comfort zone and you just do. And so um, my chapter actually was written uh, from a very heartfelt personal place. Uh, I lost my mother at age 20. Uh, the doctors told me she, I would lose her at age nine. So my biggest ask has always been through those years for one more day and the power, you know, in prayer. So that was such a powerful message that needed to be out there. And uh, so many people, you know, struggle with, with terminal illnesses and, and there's no hope and, and people need hope. Because hope can hope, hope and prayer can make people be here way past you know limitations. So, uh, to me, it was a opportunity to provide a, a legacy to my mother and also to inspire other people. And uh, with the book itself, I think the most beautiful thing about it is it's a living legacy for all the people who have been impacted by that mantra that Robbie shared that with, and also the diversity in the chapters for each is so different and you know, 
showing up or asking has just changed the trajectory of so many people's lives, whether it's been a meeting their partner for life or, or landing their dream job. Uh, and the beautiful thing with the anthology is that you can read a story and put it down and you have that sense of accomplishment. So it's not this huge book that you're hesitant to pick up. So I'm really finding the anthologies is, is a wonderful way to go. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Let's talk about the cover of the book. You know, it's all about showing up. The power is in the asking. Tell me about the cover of this book. Could should I direct that to? Should it be Robbie or Angela? Angela, because she designed the cover. Okay. So, you know, Robbie has meetings everywhere and she shows up to almost all of them, if 99% of them. I thought having the, the map there and the pinpoint and the compass is, it just really all came together. Uh, it's hard to create a cover when you're, when you're thinking about somebody else's vision and also aesthetically. So when we came up with a few different things, she threw it out to a few of the authors. And we honestly, I think had 44 out of 46 say, I absolutely love the cover. And uh, it's just been phenomenal. I think really it's, it's um, cover sell books and get your attention to actually pick it up and, and look into it. And we've had tremendous success with it. So uh, my first joy is illustrating and designing. And we've just been so lucky that that we've had this cover created that has been successful. So yeah, it just captured the nature of what the book is all about. Yeah, it does. Because, you know, Robbie, let's break it down even more. It, tell us more about it's all about showing up. Well, you know, I always say that showing up is like a treasure map. You never know what treasure you're going to find. Like a good example, when I was in Hawaii, we all met for lunch. You showed up, so I got to meet you and we have you know, been friends ever since. Had I not showed up or you not showed up, we would have had that wonderful opportunity. So I always say that no matter where you show up, the right person is there or, uh, and I always tell my members to add something to when they're doing their 30 second commercial add, and how you can help me is, and I've seen at meetings when people add that, people say, oh, I can help you. I know that person and that puts them on another journey. It does. And you know, when you talk about your members, let's talk about the mission of global society for female entrepreneurs. So I want to go back to you, Robbie, and then Joan, I want to come back to you. Let's talk about uh, global society for female entrepreneurs. Were you the leader in starting this as well? Yes, I was the founder and the CEO. And the mission of Global is to inspire, empower, educate, connect, and just be there. I would say we're like the cheerleaders for the women to help them soar to greater heights than they ever could imagine. Because we're not in competition, we're in collaboration. And we do a lot of collaborations with other groups as well, because it's coming together and being together, we can do so much more. There's room for all of us that, that, you know, this is what I think that I'm just going to speak to the women out there right now. Um, there is room for each one of us. We all have a different talent that we can bring together and all of us will shine. And so, Joan, um, what GSFE has meant to you? Tell us about what global society for female entrepreneurs means to you? First, it's a sisterhood. I have had so many friends. A good example is on Labor Day weekend, there was a pageant and I was asked to be a part of it. And my sisters came together and made it happen. They, not, they supported me financially to enter the pageant and they were there to cheer me on and I won. And I just felt that you have to do this. You can't let these guys down because they're supporting you. So that gave me an extra boost, an extra confidence. Another thing is that I've met so many people that I wouldn't normally have met. I was in the pharmaceutical industry before I was in so much out there except with medical people. Now this is more fun to me, not that I don't like medicine, but 
it's more fun because these guys, they are wanting you to go to another level. They're actually collaborating, like they said, they're connecting and they're improving me personal development. I have moved up so much because I meet the people who offer courses and I invest in myself. Having said that, I know I'm able to invest in others. I, I know mentor other people because the young ones need to be mentored since they're the ones that are going to take over when our eyes say, shut, we're gone. They have to take that baton and run with it. I like that. I like that. So Angela, how have you benefited uh, from, uh, you're the director of the GSFE organization. So tell me, how have you benefited? Benefited. I have uh, benefited in tremendous ways. Uh, it is such a, a cycle of, of giving and receiving and giving and receiving and, and coming from that place of being mentored to be in a position to be able to mentor. Uh, it's a beautiful collaboration uh, between all the women. I, I find it's just, it's, it's a sisterhood that, that uh, it's a circle of friends that we are we are really here to just help each other elevate to the next level and if we don't know how you know to guide them we have somebody in the organization who's been there and done that and it's a, it's really a pay it forward and it comes from the heart it's just been a highly beneficial for me for all the beautiful souls that i've met and interacted with and and you know the forever friends that i've made so i've been very grateful and honored to be a part of it and now to be a director that's you know quite quite an honor for me so Robbie, GSFE, how many chapters do you have? We have 11 chapters and we have almost 300 members and we're global. When we when the pandemic came, we had all of our networks meeting on Zoom. So that gave us the idea that even when we could go back live in California, we could set up Zoom networks and we have uh, we have Zoom, we have three Zoom networks a month. We also have United Kingdom coming in in January. That'll be on Zoom. We have Austria coming in in January, and that'll be on Zoom. We have Canada coming in in January, and that'll be on Zoom. And what's the great part about that is our local people can jump on Zoom and meet the international and out-of-state people. So again, we're in we're just in enveloping the sisterhood to become better. And I wanted to mention that Joan is also a director. She's the director of our Riverside and Emmett Network. Wow, so I'm not here in Hawaii, so we need to have a chapter out here. Is this what we I'm do? I, I've been, I wanted one so bad. All right, well, we have to talk about that a little later. Absolutely, because it's just so much. So Joan, I want to come back to you. What motivates you to do what you do? I think that's the drive that I have, the passion that I have to connect and to educate. I just want to be a resource for people. And I wanted also for my grandchildren to realize that they can be whoever they want to be. Do whatever you want to do and not sit back and wait for somebody to do stuff for you. You can be a leader. For instance, I do a lot of serving. And why did I serve? I get such joy in serving. I call it my psychic paycheck because whenever I help someone, I get such joy. Someone helped me. I remember coming to this country with very little money, $50. And I got help because of relationships that I had built. And so I invite people to build relationships and not just be a taker in life, be a giver because uh, there's joy in giving, such joy. Yes, it is, yes. So Angela, why do you believe that many individuals have a hard time asking? Hmm. I think so many strong women are so used to standing on their own, uh, maybe not having support from other people, so they just find the solutions and, and they think they can do it all. And, you know, Robbie, taught me such an important lesson a couple of years ago. She said, if you don't ask, you rob someone the joy of giving. And I never really looked at it like that. I, I felt like asking was a selfish thing. Uh, but really, truthfully, uh, we don't give because we receive. But if you don't ask, you don't get. And it, it is 
uh, such a wonderful thing to be able to give and it makes you feel good and, and it just helps. So it, it's been uh, it's been interesting to, to be able to see that uh, more women are asking and standing up for saying, I know that I'm capable of so many things, but it's it's so nice to know that I don't have to do it all because there is help out there and they're yeah. standing in the power. It is. You know, Robbie, when Robbie was um, out here in Honolulu, we had lunch in Waikiki and I was having an event and I am today, I am still friends. They're still supporters of Sisters in Par and Hawaii because of you, Robbie, because we had this conversation. And you said, just ask them. And they're still supporting Sisters in Par and Hawaii. So please, Robbie, uh, tell us a little bit more about how people should feel comfortable in asking. Well, I, I, like Angela said, I was one of those that I always liked to help. And I remember one day, a person came, somebody came up to me and said, Robbie, you get so much pleasure of helping, don't you? And I said, oh, yes, my heart, it gets so full. And they said, well, then why are you not letting others get that same feeling? So, and the other thing I wanted to mention that I think our network is really good. We're like accountability partners. And Joan is a good example. She kept saying she was going to write a book and, you know, we became her accountability partner and her book came out. She actually beat me in my getting my book out. Once she we got on top of her, she was several weeks before mine. Joe, let's talk about your book, The Run for Freedom. Oh, that is some book. <laughs> it actually... This was done because I wanted to share my story with my grandchildren, because when I was a little girl, I wanted to know what my grandmother was like. I didn't have a picture, I had nothing. So I figured these kids need to know what they're enjoying now did not come easy. It came from sacrifice. And that sacrifice was from grandma, Nan, they call me. And so I wrote this book, it's called The Run for Freedom, Golden Nuggets for Success in Life and in Business. Because the nuggets that are shared some are from the good book, some are from poets, some are from mentors. And I use these principles to help me to be successful in life. For instance, if you were living happy, you had everything done for you and everything was taken away from you, the rug was pulled from under you. It's no point having a pity party it means that you have to make decision and the decisions sometimes have to be fast. In my case, it was very fast. And I came to America with $50, $50 and a six-year-old child. And I had relationship with one person who said to me, if you come to California, I can help you better. So I came and I took a job as a pharmaceutical sales rep because I did not have the qualifications to do pharmacy here. And that helped me to go along in business. I remembered to over deliver on the promise. Those are things that I had in the book. I also had relationships from A to Z, from 26 letters that shared what each letter meant, like A's for action. You can't sit and expect things to happen. Manna doesn't drop from above. And then I have commitment. I really think about being committed and to be loyal to what you're going to do. So many people don't remember that word commitment and that's my pet peeve. If you say you're going to do something, you should do it because you're building trust when you do that. And when your trust is broken, nobody wants to be bothered with you. It's very hard to get back in the groove, so to speak. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, I, I applaud you and I ask everyone to go out and purchase your book, The Run for Freedom. And Angela, you you're doing a book launch, 100 Most Successful Women. Tell us about your book. So we actually have 52 in that volume one, uh, 52 amazing international ladies from all over the place with such wonderful stories. Uh, the thesis of it really is what success means to you and how it's defined. And uh, the purpose really was to give the younger generation something to aspire towards and, and the knowledge and the wisdom that we can give them from all the you know years that we've spent. Uh, obviously, 
success means something different to everybody. And to see these young minds wonder what, you know, how do I become successful? Uh, each story again, just like the, the anthology with Robbie is so diverse. And so uh, one person's story is gonna connect with that one person reading it. And that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, we're here to inspire, educate and, and you know, aspire before we expire, right? <laughs> I like that, I like that. And we, we have your um, website and we'll put that up where people can um, register um, for your book launch and it's free. So the, the first volume came out, the second volume, we're still waiting for the date. Uh, but on the website is a lot of suggested reads from uh, the sisters in the GSFE group. Uh, a lot of them have self-published, uh, but there is a page on there with links so that everybody can get the exposure and make more book sales that will help them. Okay. We're here, to, we're here to collaborate. You're here to collaborate. So Robbie, what motivates you to do what you do? Well, um, I have to tell you what really started me. Back in 1957, I remember asking a woman if she could teach me something. And she looked at me and said, I will not teach you or any woman. And I made a decision that I, I was shocked. And I made a decision that day that whatever I learned, I'd spend the rest of my life sharing with women. And prior to starting GSFB, I was the NAFI global coordinator for 29 years. Then NAFI decided not to have networks anymore. So luckily we had already started the nonprofit in 2017. So it was just easy just to move my networks into GSFE and that's what we did. Yeah. And I wanted to mention on the book, the first day our book came out, we made number one bestseller US and the next day we made number one bestseller international and uh, Joan's book and the other book also have, have hit those statuses. Congratulations, lady. Congratulations. And Thank Joan, you. I want to come back to you. And then Angela, I want you to follow up. And then Robbie, if you ladies had to leave a message to young women listening to Sister, the Sister Power Show, what would that message say, Joan? Be authentic. Be yourself. Be bold. Be courageous. Do what you want to do. Don't listen to the naysayers. Be passionate about what you want to do and make that your job. Because when you are not passionate about your job, you'll be miserable for the rest of your life. So go for your passion. <laughs> Love it. Be passionate. Be bold. Be fierce. Come on, Angela. Uh, my message would be to the same thing, stand in your authenticity. Uh, don't let anyone else's opinion of you define who you are. Find a sisterhood of people that are going to help empower you to help you believe that your dreams are possible because they are. Never give up and just keep on, keep on going. It will happen. It's a matter of time, but, but definitely never give up on your dreams. Never, ever, ever give up. Robbie. Well, I say that obstacles are opportunities waiting to happen. So always remember that. And secondly, stop waiting for perfect. There is no perfect. You've got to step out. You can always adjust. So many times people don't do it because they want it to be perfect. Well, there is no perfect. Only God is perfect. So, I, so forget about perfect. Just get out and adjust because when people see it, they'll give you ideas and you can make it better. The other thing is I, I believe always be who you really are. Don't try to be what other people say you should be and do your passion. If you do not do your passion, you it'll slow you down. When you do your passion, success will come so easy. I mean, the road is not easy all every day, but you know what? Obstacles are opportunities waiting to happen. There you go. Wow, I'm fired up and ready to go. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's all about showing up. And what I have found, showing up, you have to be present. You really have to be present. And, you know, when you work in that room, you need to listen. What are some of the other um, examples? And, and it's all about showing up. The power is in the asking, Joan. I think you have to be disciplined. You have to be determined to achieve what you want. You have to be accountable for your failures. 
and learn from those failures because we all, like Robbie says, we all make mistakes. The only thing that I say that would be wrong is if you keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, and that's insanity. Angela, give us some more pointers. And it's all about showing up. The power is in the aspect. You know, it's really funny. Um, so many times you get invited somewhere and you don't feel like going. You try to talk yourself out of it. You know, you just, you make excuses. And then for me, because I've been hearing Robbie with this mantra for so long, every time I start to feel that little bit of adjustment, like, nah, I decide, no, that means I need to go now. That means I need to be present at that meeting. I, there's, there's something I can share or someone's gonna share with me uh, that, that will add value or I can add value to. And I always get something every time I show up or give something. So when you feel like not going, go. <laughs> get dressed and go. Yeah, so Robbie, when is your next meeting for Global Society for Female Entrepreneurs? Well, tomorrow we have a Zoom conference for our out of state. So we're doing a conference online to cover. We do a national, we do an, a live concert conference every year. But now that we have global, we decided to also add this year a uh, global conference. So tomorrow's that. Then November 13th, we're doing World Kindness Day. It'll be our second year to do that. And uh, like I said, we have a live conference every year. And then we also do the Lady in Blue Fashion Show and Awards. And then we collaborate with others. In fact, uh, April 2nd, we'll be collaborating with She Inspires Me from England, Ada Gutterman. And she's doing a big event in England. But this year, we decided we didn't want to fly to England. So she's coming to California. We're going to be doing the awards here as a collaboration. Well, how do we get involved? I mean, so. Is there, can you tell us your website? Where it's, should we go to? Okay, our website is global society for female entrepreneurs.org. You can learn a lot about us there. Um, and it, you can join, you can uh, read about us it, and, and find out where our meetings are. And, and we'll be posting the uh, She Inspires Me Award information if you want to go to england we can connect you with ada to go to england for her huge event it's going to be amazing and of course it'll be amazing in california and i think she said maybe next year or the year after she's going to hawaii oh okay well we we must talk about that we can go on and on about the power is in the asking and ladies robbie joan angela Thank you for sharing your stories. Thank you for your wisdom. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough right here at Sister Power. Remember, it's all about showing up. Aloha.